hi, yesterday's news viewers. Today we have a treat for you. I am talking with Reclaim the Silence. I'm talking with Rebecca Johnson and Sebastian. How are you today? Just fine. Just fine, Just there. Fine. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it, it's morning here, so I'm a little tired, you know, uh, so as they say in Swedish, uh, ja, lite trött. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but uh, otherwise, I'm good. Good. Uh, how are you guys? It's evening there, long day. Yeah, it's been a long day for me. I, I just uh, did uh, 24 hours work and I'm uh, just about when I um, get off work, I just uh, get here to Reka and record some new songs and new just materials. For, just for fun. It's, yeah, for fun. it's the raw material. So all yes. the band can hear our thoughts about new songs. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's yeah. nothing you can hear no, for a sorry, year or so. so it's, you're in demo phase. That's all right. I have so many Dropbox folders with artists that I work with where we're in, they're doing recordings right now and we're yes. sending things back and forth and hey, here's some ideas and oh, here's the mm. raws. We're getting ready and we're getting people to mix. Like I've got a uh, Jacob Herman down in Gothenburg is mixing an album right now for a band I'm doing some work with. So we've been running over the music. So lots of cool stuff going on. And I love to hear that music is going for everybody, especially all the Swedish artists, because my heart belongs to Sweden. So <laughs> it's, the sound of Sweden is my heart. I've been infected since 86. Thank you, Europe, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome to hear. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so let's talk about it. You guys have just released on the 15th. Um, you've put out some new music. It's acoustic sets that you've got. And the videos are on YouTube right now. For all of you watching, you can get the, the sounds soon on Spotify. They're just in process. So they'll be popping up sooner or later. But it's Reclaim the Silence on YouTube. Talk about the, the music that you decided to do and why you decided to do an acoustic. Ooh. Or shall I? <laughs> it's a uh, really... Good question. But, uh, I think uh, in my mind uh, we did it just to release some new stuff uh, and uh, new things. Uh, we got our classic songs yeah. uh, in metal vers version and uh, we like to give it a little a touch and experiment from our side I think. And just to show fans and new fans, new comings to yeah, get the process on that. We actually done a couple of uh, acoustic setting song, uh, acoustic setting shows, I'm about to say. Uh, so we just, why not record it? Yes. Well, we still have the time because our real studio time we were supposed to have in December was canceled. So I, I had the mm. idea, let's do this now. I don't mm. want to sit around anymore. I want to do something. So we did it at home, my yeah. home. <laughs> you know, and it, it's better to be active in music right now than it is to sit around doing nothing with the pandemic. Yeah. It is, yes, I agree. I would go crazy if I just sit down and do nothing like, okay, when is uh, Corona <laughs> ended? I don't know. And here's oh, yeah. the cat. And here's the cat. We were talking about here's the cat, cat before. Hello to working from home. What's your cat's name? Uh, her name is Frigg on paper, but I mostly call her Friggekotten or Friggis. Oh, because she <laughs> always listens when I say that. <laughs> yes, cats are very territorial. If they think that you're not paying attention to them, they want to show up and make their face known and you're working they want to yeah. lay on your laptop you know <laughs> so <laughs> so the new music i was listening through the tracks and you've got one song that it's like you're talking about how a person lied to you and broke your heart and you don't want them in your life anymore and who wrote the song personal experience um i'm always the one making the lyrics so yes. um, it's not 100 percent like accurate you know it's like okay some of it happened and then I just use some imagination just not to make it too personal to me so more people can relate. Yeah, and I think that I heard it because as I was listening, I'm like, I can totally relate to this song. Yeah. And, you know, awesome. that's in music is such an interpretation. People may write something one way, but it's how somebody's listening hears it and what they, they tend to pull from it. So it was kind of cool. I was like, I wonder if there's actually a story behind this or if it's kind of just a mix. So tiny bit of a real story, but <laughs> I'm not telling about whom. <laughs> so let me ask you this because I came into contact with you first through um, your former band in silence and you know I caught you guys out at Sweden Rock a couple years back what happened with uh, in silence and how did reclaim the silence become <laughs> this is also like hard to yes really hard to describe. Uh, it's most about our former bandmate yeah um was really not playing fair with us he went behind our back and uh, took the name for himself yes like uh, i own this now on paper i don't know what's called in english but yeah um, so it's my copyrights. 
yeah. Uh, Copyright, yes. Um, so he did that behind our back. And then when we finally had enough with his stupidity, if you can mm. say so, and mm. like, yeah, you're out. We're had enough. Then he's like, na, 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 I got the band name. And we're like, okay, good luck with that. So, yeah, that was exactly what happened. And then yeah. we just took a better name. Yes. More well, searchable and more, yeah, it's a better like, name yeah, like, for us. Like we reclaimed the silence. Yeah, and that's, I, I kind of figured it had something to kind of along the lines with the way the names were shaped. But when I saw you at Student Rock, it didn't look like, you know, some bands how like they're coming at the end and it, they can't even play on stage together because I've got some great photos of you just in your glory. And it's clear that you guys have a great time when you're on stage. And it was kind of a, wait, what happened to In Silence? So I wanted to hear from your side of it. You're like, hey, what happened to you guys? I mean, it happens all the time. Bands go their separate ways or people want to work on something else. But it's just yeah. a little bit curious. But so we're still like four original members. So yeah. yes. So with the new band, how are you guys going to do the music? I mean, because what you have right now is acoustic. Are you going to stay along the lines of in silence style metal, or are you going to revamp your sound? Uh, we are actually not a new band at all. Uh, I think because uh, we just uh, changed the name, so we are the, exactly the same band, but with uh, yeah one. Uh, the different mem member okay. so, and we're still going for metal so uh, yeah this yes. was just a, a pulse thingy yes so, so to speak so love and metal is still yeah. with us love and metal <laughs> perfect so tell me a little bit about in silence because i know we missed each other at sweden rock so i didn't have a chance to sit down with you guys you know reclaim the silence in silence how did you guys form all the years ago how long have you been together we always say like three years yeah. and I was like no it's, it's four very... or is it five now yeah. I don't know <laughs> yeah we we actually started on uh, separate ways like him and then we mm -hmm. okay we want to do something else we want to do something new and then we just search for new members and then we and here we are yeah easy as that he said yes easy and you guys, are you still working with the NEMIS program? And for those of you who are watching this that aren't familiar with the Swedish scene, NEMIS is the new music in Sweden. It's through, I think it's right, Studio from, from... Studio from it. Yes. I, I can never get that last part right, but it's a program <laughs> that helps artists, you know, to get, you know, what you need to help to get you started and to survive, um, but also helps you guys, a limited number of people a year, bands get to play Sweden rock through this program. So you guys came through the NEMIS program for Sweden Rock when you played. Are you yeah. with Reclaim Silence? Are you working with NEMIS still? What's going on with that? Yeah. Still working. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Well, maybe we'll see you back out with Sweden Rock as Reclaim the Silence. That would be really cool. Yeah. yeah. Would be awesome. Really cool. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so what is going on with you guys in the environment in Sweden right now? I mean, I know things here in the States are very different. Some areas have shows, some don't. What's going on for you guys there right now? Have you had a chance to go out and do any playing? Not really, no. It's uh, COVID. Uh, it's everywhere, and we we are just uh, uh, doing stuff at home. Uh, we are not rehearsal, and uh, not that much that, that we want to. But uh, yeah, homework <laughs> for the band. <laughs> yeah, it's more Sweden started off pretty easy with people, you know. Uh, yeah, just keep your distance and stuff like that. But now they actually started to do harder restrictions like now you have to wear this mask and you cannot be more than this and this and mm. you cannot serve alcohol in uh, restaurants after clock, uh, eight uh, o'clock eight o'clock yeah. swedish evening time how do you say it in english uh, like eight, 20 yeah. Or, uh, two, yeah 20 yeah, yeah. 20 yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah yeah so, that's, yeah that's that's weird because um i've been watching um you know i i know peter evers and i know that he's got his brewery he's also got his restaurants i've been watching a lot of things come across my facebook from his feed about what's mm -hmm. been going on over there and how he's been very vocal trying to you know battle against you know hey you know how come other things can be open but you're going to shut things down that it's it's not a it's not a fair playing game for everybody and it's hurting businesses and it hurts artists and I know for a while you guys were doing shows where they at least allowed like I think it was 50 people was the cap that you had yeah, like over exactly. summer and but then in some restaurants it couldn't be done because you couldn't have certain amounts of people together but you could still go and dine but you couldn't have a show so it's, it's been that kind of off space where it's not a fair playing field and artists have really suffered this year and how mm. bad has it has the COVID impacted you guys as a band and and what have you learned in the last year about 
doing music differently? We have suffered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have suffered. But yeah. have you suffered in silence? No. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> uh, Damn. <laughs> yes, we, we have suffered uh, because we always uh, looking for new shows and want to, yeah, travel different places and just uh, show us to some to, to our fans and uh, newcomers. But uh, we, what we didn't suffer is uh, uh, with um, the band. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? Ke uh, chemistry. The chemistry. chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Between it. Uh, the chemistry in the band is uh, still going strong, and we think uh, it will. Uh, it needs to be strong in these uh, hard times, because uh, uh, I think many. Some bands, many bands uh, could uh, just quit, uh, break, to take a break, and, and we don't like to take a break because we think it will affect our community very, 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 very hard. And a lot of people actually have, like a lot of people have just, it's whether it's the impact it's had, I mean, suicide is at an all time high around the world, the depression, people are out of work. It's stunted a lot of people's creativity um, I do expect that once people are, do get back to, they're going to have a lot of angry albums coming out because it's going to, that, you know, to, to push out that, you know, the feelings and the music. And, you know, I mean, for you, I know we were talking before you guys were working and planning on recording your album in December and what's going to happen with your album now? Cause I mean, you've got the acoustic that just came out. What happens for your full album now? It's on hold. <laughs> it's on hold mm -hmm. until we can get into the studio. So but we actually plan on making a music video for an old song. So we're still going with the music and releasing mm. a music video. And we're going to be outside and we're going to be <laughs> distant. <laughs> and so um, we're doing something else. So the album has to be on hold. Like it's kind of impossible to go to the studio right mm. now. So yes. later on, guys, see you later with a whole mm. album. But <laughs> a music video will be uh, the end of spring, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think so. We'll be done in the end of spring. Mm -hmm. Now, are you guys going to do your own video? Do you guys do your own videos? That's, I mean, or do you work with somebody to do them for you? No, the, the latest one we have done on our own. Yeah. Uh, I think we have one music video, the song, the video for the song One for All. That was a collaboration with the Metalheads Against yes. Bullying. Yes. But after that, we've done everything, <laughs> me and Sebastian. Yeah, and Metalheads Against Bullying is a really great organization. And why are we talking about other organizations and other collaborations? There are so many great vocalists in, in Sweden, and especially the women vocalists. And I see you chatting with, you know, people like Osa Nadebrandt, you know, and, and, you know, there's Scarlet. And are you going to do any kind of collaborations that maybe coming up? Don't know yet. Maybe. We don't know. Really cool. I'm loving the collaborations because like, you know, the, the, was it boss bitch that Scarlett did and she had Tasty and she had Osa and herself and the vocals on that were insane. You've got the cleans, you've got the screams, it was, the growls. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Love, mm -hmm. love, I love to see when people collaborate and I think that would be really cool if that, if you guys get the spark and something does, make sure to let us know because I think that that would be a really cool fun thing to watch. Yes. So what do you guys have planned for 2021? Anything that, that you've kind of been maybe messing with that you... It's the music video and also trying to do the new recordings. Yeah. So it's kind of loose plans, but it's some kind of plan. Now, when you're talking about Not playing... Really when you talk about playing uh, or doing a video for an older song, with the, with the thing we talked about at the beginning about what happened with In Silence, do you guys have the rights to your music or is that kind of a... Uh, you don't have them anymore no we have the rights to the music we have the, uh, on spotify so because okay. i'm the lyrics writer mm -hmm. and you you and daniel yes always write the music so we own the rights to our songs okay so for the fans that don't know you and that that are just learning of reclaim the silence go look up in silence check out that music because you're going to get that same sound and so you'll have an idea of the electric stuff not just the acoustic plus follow along on reclaim the silence to get the acoustic you should oh, just go to yes. reclaim the silence. Oh, did your music move to? In, did you get? A, were you able to move your music from in silence to reclaim the yes. silence? Yeah, yes. we did. Yes. Perfect. So well, we have we have an album up with the old songs. So yeah, everything is uh, yeah. is there. Perfect. So just so go scratch what I said. It's 
<laughs> Go check out Reclaim the Silence. That's the lovely yeah, thing. Yeah, Reclaim the Silence. Yes, yes. Reclaim. Yes. yes. So how did you guys end up getting into music, each of you? Did, were you, did you start out like music in school or was it there somebody that turned you on to music? Our father. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. For us. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, because my dad is a drummer. He's been playing like in blues band or rock bands ever since I was, yeah, not existing. Uh, so I've always been sitting back at his drums, like, so that was the opening to the music, I think. Mm -hmm. But I've been singing since I was two, so I think it's my own uh, interest as well. So. And my story is uh, pretty, pretty the same, actually. Your father. Yes, yes. <laughs> My father uh, uh, are, uh, was a drummer in a uh, trash metal band uh, and uh, for many, many, many years. And I, yeah, he kind of put us behind the drum set and uh, <laughs> yeah, put us behind the, the, the guitar and the, behind the mic. And we just uh, played in the rehearsal studios and stuff. So, uh, yeah, father. The best babysitter is a drum set. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and if you if you're buying instruments as a as you start out as a child and going to teenager, you're not going to have a chance to veer off to get in any kind of trouble because you're going to be so broke from just owning the instruments you have that <laughs> you're just done. Like you're just done. You don't have time for anything else. And it's it's funny that you say that your parents brought you into music because I think that's a story I've heard a lot with Swedish artists because it's it's very different than it is here in the states because the music programs just aren't as rich and, in, and ingrained in our society here as much as they are in Sweden and I love that you guys have that access and it's something people are constantly having access to. It, it, music is such an enriching experience and it's sad to see that some places around the world just don't embrace it but where you guys have it it's so vibrant. Mm -hmm. Yeah we are very happy about that yeah. too actually. So what about your influences? Do you guys, who influences you now in music? Like, and is there anybody that started out early that you still are just completely in love with? As a young girl, I didn't have any special influencer, I think. Or, okay, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> As year 92, Carola Hegquiste released mm -hmm. an album. <laughs> It was not so Christian as it is now. It was more blues rock and roll and her singing vocals was still like, wow, she still does it, but more like, thank you God right now. And I'm not really into that right now. So that was the beginning, I think. But nowadays I have more um, uh, Canadian girls like uh, Britney Slays, you know, and Unleashed uh, Archers. Yes, Unleashed the Archers, yes. Yeah. They're just north of me in yeah. Vancouver. I love Brittany. She's an amazing human being. So, yes. Yeah. And I also <laughs> like uh, Cobra Page from Cobra and the Lotus. Yes. She is a phenomenal. Oh. I love Cobra. Like, I didn't know who they were. They were on tour with, I think it was, it was the Kiss and Def Leppard tour where they came through here. It's been a number of years and it was um, at a stadium, like stadium tour, outdoor amphitheater. And they come on and my friend and I had gotten there early because I always like to check out the opening bands. And so I was like, who is this? I have no idea. And she put it out and I was like, oh, she sounds good. And then she belted this. Ah! And I was like, holy yeah. shit. I <laughs> like, damn, she's amazing. And I got to go talk to her afterwards. And I was just like, all I could say it was like, God dang, your vocals are damn. Like, That's cool. yeah. yeah, she's got some kick ass vocals. Yes. Yeah. Anyone else? Not for me. I think I will be down here. <laughs> uh, ooh, uh, I think wait. you and Daniel always say the same. Yeah, we always. Um, Metallica. Go. No, actually not. Uh, for me, it's a creator. Oh uh, yes, German band. Uh, mm. and, uh, Part the pit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Raise the flag yeah. of creator. <laughs> I, know, I love creator. It's, I'll, when you're done, I'll tell you a story that I just thought was hysterical about them. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Uh, creator, um, Trivium, and uh, Slayer, I think. I love Slayer. Yeah, I'm a Slayer. I saw them first time when uh, I aged myself. I think it was like 89, 88. It was the 88, 89 tour they did with Judas Priest. And Ooh. got to hang out and party with the guys and got to hang out inside the stage and watch you know, the guys. And I got to talked to KK a couple of years back and we talked about how I was standing there getting to watch him on the stage and then watching the fans like freaking oh. out and screaming it was like the most surreal moment ever I'm like it was really cool but so the 
creator. So they came out here um, about three, two, three years ago with Sabaton and Syrah. And yeah. so they were in the sec second slot and I'm watching where the small venue and there's this girls are all dolled up because of Sabaton. And they're like, our hair's all done. And okay, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. And they're holding the barrier. And, and for Syrah, I was like, you guys are okay. I'm like, look, trust me. When creator comes on, you don't want to be standing where you're, oh, no, no, no. We want to be right up front for Sabaton. We love Sabaton. Mm -hmm. nicest girls and I'm like trust me you're not and so I was out there and I was actually doing some stuff with Cyrus so I was able to kind of hang out and I just kind of stood there and I was like okay after I'm done shooting some of the creator I'm just going to turn around and just watch because I know what's going to happen yeah. <laughs> and the girls came there and I'm like and I looked at her I'm like last chance you really should move oh no no I'm good okay and he goes bring it together for death and I was like this is going to be good. I turn around. This girl's holding on. The pit just starts going. She's holding for dear life. And then she's like, she's like, <laughs> up her, her face was like, help me. And by the time she said her hair was all messed up and I was felt so bad for her. I was like, it's, it's like the most unexpected band to be in the middle of a tour with Syrah and Sabaton. <laughs> have, like, have you got a recording on? on that i did not and i i think i may have a photo or two because i might have like snapped her doing it but i've got photos of her but it was this i felt so bad for her i mean she must have been like 18 or 19 and and it was clear she just didn't know who creator was but it was like oh trust me i know i've loved creator for you you don't want to be standing next to her pit unless you're ready to run and it was the most mm -hmm. amazing insane yeah yes so, yes wow. yeah music no, is fun absolutely. music is fun do you, do you guys ever get anybody moshing at your shows i'm like you're not necessarily that kind of mosh, but I've seen moshing at ghost shows, so I have to ask. Yeah, we actually had one drunk punk rocker <laughs> when we were in uh, Helsingborg. Uh, it was really yeah. awful, but he's like, Which venue was that at? <laughs> was it a, an outdoor show? or? Yeah, it was an outdoor show. So it was that? really so awful as well. But... He was drunk and like, <laughs> yeah, I almost forgot about that. Yeah, I remember. And then they, he came, um, came in front of the stage with a friend, like, <laughs> and the song went more like this. And they like, yeah, <laughs> like, okay, guys, you're very drunk. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. okay, you like us. <laughs> that is so funny. So for you guys, I know you've done a lot of shows. Do you have any really great show memories or stories that, that just have stuck with you all these years? Sweden Rock. Sweden Rock is the biggest, uh, coolest. Yeah, that was cool because they yeah. always have the really great lighting and you guys were just like lit up on yeah. the stage and yeah, it was. <laughs> but the best thing, yeah, best thing about that one is like, yeah, we're going over this first song. What the fuck is the lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm starting like, and I know he's going to sing with me. So it's like, okay, I'm singing this. What are you singing now? <laughs> like, so I'm just walking like, hey, yeah, this yeah, is not yeah. weird. It's not so weird. Like I've sung this song like 10 million times or whatnot. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was not nervous. It, it was just a total blackout because I was really hyped. Like, oh, I love this. And like, oh God, I'm singing. What am I singing? Hello, my friends, or something. <laughs> it was uh, the song Last Wish of Mine. So it's like, I am alone. No, that's why I'm <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's so, so funny. That's, that's really yeah. good. Yeah, that was, a, that was a great show. I'm like, because that when they, since they put the tent in over that <laughs> stage and they made it a lot, a bigger <laughs> stage than before, it, it draws more people into that group, especially like if it's raining because, you know, Sweden Rock, you, you never know. You can be one minute nice and sunny and the next you're getting soaked, but people will barge into there. And, and I love that the Thursday events that they do take the chance and put all the, sh the Swedish bands in there from the NEMA's program. Because for me coming from the States, I'm always checking out the bands and it. It's hard to always navigate finding a new band that or a local band you don't know. And so doing that, I've, I've discovered so many bands. And so that's like every Thursday of Sweden Rock, that's my place. I'm like, I'm there for every single band because I want to see what they do, whether I know who they are or not, or whether the music is what I like or not. At least it kind of opens my horizons. And I talk a little bit about that to people that I'm writing back here and saying, hey, you know, check out this band, you know, you, you might like them. And then there's bands that are just like totally shocked me. Like, wait, what? How have we never heard of you before? And it's, so it's a really cool, I like that they do the local. So oh, and yes. It, and the you. stages at Sweden Rock are some of the biggest stages around, so you can't go wrong at any stage there. No. You can. No. So have you guys toured outside of Sweden yet? 
I was no, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> when shows do pick up, where would you guys like to go? Three, two, two one, one. back in Germany. Yeah, yes. Back in. Yes. <laughs> oh, Germany. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool. Of course. Okay, cut this. We do it. Yeah. <laughs> back in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Vakken is amazing. That's. Yeah. I've been a few times to Vakken. It's a pretty amazing festival, so it's pretty cool. Oh, you have been there? Never. Been oh, there. you've never even gone? No. It's like Sweden Rock on steroids. Oh. <laughs> I think they have. Um, I remember Sweden Rock was like thirty-six thousand the last time, and Vakken is something like eighty thousand plus all their staff and the crews, and it's insane, insane. Like you, if you're tired walking at Sweden Rock. It's really compared. <laughs> Bring a wheelchair to walk in. <laughs> yeah, I came home with some really messed up feet from all the walking we were doing because we were walking the there's a from the VIP back to uh where the artist area is where the camping and the media and stuff is uh a good mile or two or something down the road and the buses were always full. So we would just be like walking, like I don't I don't care, let's just walk, you know. And yeah. so but it, there's and the camping is all around and people are so just party 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 the whole time but it, there's so many great stages and like the way they angle their stages there some of them are right next to each other but they're angled just right so you don't even hear the sound if you're standing at the next stage so that they can have two bands on because like i think um the band i was working with while i was there we were on the beer garden stage and on the other stage uh, i want to say it was like is it wolf heart i can't remember who was on stage at the time and uh you couldn't even hear the other bands. So it was really kind of cool. Like you could be sitting there, but you're not going to hear, but you could see the, the big monitors and see what they were doing, but you couldn't hear them. It was really yeah, cool. cool. Yeah. And then they did the, um, the last year they had the last year, well, the last year before 2019, they had this really cool firework show, like pyro. It was lit up like, like if you imagine like Mad Max, like yeah. the Thunderdome kind of, the fire, that's what it was like. I mean, we were like, what in the hell? Like it was insane. Like, it was like the world was ending kind of like really cool. So if you get to do Vakken, you should definitely, even just to go to experience it, do it. I mean, I'm hoping that they can make it this year. We don't know yet still. I've got my ticket. I'm ready to go. It's just a matter of, I'm like, I'm lined up from like England in May to end of summer with festivals across Germany and Sweden. And I mean, the show so bad and broken. <laughs> Same here, of course. Yeah. So Vakken, anywhere else that you guys have maybe that you might target to look at? Because I know people tour e the EU a whole lot from Sweden. Is that something you guys would be looking at or Scandinavia? Uh, what, what, what is it called? The, the... Oh, Loud Park? I don't, I, I don't remember. Is it the UK? In... No, Japan. Japan. I know they do Loud Park in Japan. Um, I know this. Uh, Daniel is always talking about it. So yes. Like, oh, yeah. So, I, just, so Japan. Just so Japan. But yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys get a lot of people listening from Japan? No. 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 Well, Actually, we will make sure to start tagging you and things in Japan so people know who yeah. you are. Yeah. <laughs> you guys need to get. You guys need to get featured in Burn. Mm -hmm. get featured in burn that will get you guys some people looking at you burn is a mystery of its own but you can get in there yeah so, okay yeah. yeah sounds really good yeah so we've talked about music anything yeah. else you guys want to talk about like to let the fans know about your music what you're about um do you have any causes or anything you guys stand behind or anything that you want them to know Hmm. Tell them your shoe size. Mm, my shoe size. <laughs> <laughs> or here's a good time to also say we want to be sponsored by you. <laughs> so if you're saying like your shoes, if there's a shoe brand. <laughs> yeah, well, I, do I do. I've worked with artists that had sponsors that sponsored their clothing and their shoes. So <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh. It does happen. So oh. yeah. I want to think about that and uh, get back to you. So you will hook me up with stuff. <laughs> It's, it's, the, it's the weirdest thing. Like this is NAM week and nobody's at NAM because it's, it's virtual. So I'm watching all the stuff virtual and it's a little, I mean, like the program stuff is somewhat the same, but it's, this is the week everybody goes to negotiate all their deals and all their stuff. And it's, it's been a really strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. 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 No, I don't think we have anything else to say or. No. We just want people to take care of themselves. 
Of course, yes. Be safe. Definitely, be safe. that is a huge, be safe, be careful out there and yeah. stop hating everybody and stop dividing yeah. and bring each other together because we're more alike than we are apart. Yes, definitely. Um, love, love and metal. Yeah, love and metal, <laughs> definitely. Yes. Now, one last question. Are you guys gonna be doing any live streams anytime soon? If we get together in the rehearsal studio, yes. we will do that. Um, we are too many people in the band to be together in rehearsal, so mm. we have to wait. So we mm. have a maximum of four people together in the same room, and we are five. So yeah. we have to kick uh, the bass player Josephine out, or uh, the drums, <laughs> or I don't know. <laughs> you can't go without me and the singer. Yeah, that, that's actually, actually true. Actually, true. <laughs> isn't it funny? Like. The bass players always get dogged on, like, all the way. But it's, it's oh, it but she's only with one, so she can just yeah. But a band can't a band can't be anybody without the drummer and the bass player. <laughs> they lead you. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Definitely, definitely. And so, for the wrap on this, where can fans connect with you? I know you guys are Reclaim the Silence official on Facebook. Are you on Instagram, yep. Twitter? Where else are you guys at? Yeah, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Uh, and Spotify. And Spotify. Yeah. So Facebook, uh, Reclaim Science Official, Instagram, uh, Reclaim Underline, and on, on, on. So Reclaim, yes. <laughs> Reclaim the Science Official yes. with underlines under every yeah. um, space. And do you, you guys know. have a merch shop right now? No. no. You have to talk, to, uh, talk to us directly from our Facebook page to okay. get the merch. So if you guys want to support Reclaim the Silence, you can do it by going to YouTube, stream the hell out of their videos because that helps the algorithms, helps them to get found, hit their Spotify, get them up in the algorithms there, you know, follow, make sure there's a little heart button that's there, the little the heart, yeah. follow yeah. along on Spotify, you know, share with your friends. And if you, again, if you want merch, connect with them directly through Facebook, get some merch from them, help support this up and coming band. Thank you so much. We had a great Thank time you. with you guys. And like I should say, I we like there's no we here, but I had a great time with you guys. It was really nice catching up, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye -bye. Love and <laughs>